Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. So excited to have one of my favorite people as a guest today, Amy Spolstra, who you will be able to see on stage at Mile High Noon this year. So two things, most certainly hit subscribe so you never miss any Mile High Tick, whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to it on um, iTunes or Spotify, make sure you hit subscribe. And also, you know you wanna be there, riseuptomilehigh.com is where you can get all the details. Um, Dr. Amy is a practicing, principled family chiropractor. She's in Coeur d'Alene, who I never know if I pronounced that right. Nailed it. Uh, did I do it? Oh, since yeah. 2008. Uh, the FOCUS program is her birth child, uh, <laughs> neurodeflective <laughs> retraining method, navigate healing and focus education. Oh my God, all of that. Um, and we're going to have fun talking and also helping you learn more about chiropractic and children and pediatrics and uh, different neurodeflective disorders. So thank you for joining us today, Dr. Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for all of you guys do. Happy to be here. Honored to be a part of this. Well, we're honored to have you take your time to be here with us. So now, um, first of all, let's people know a couple mission things they do. They see you teaching things, but they may not know you. Share a little bit about how you somehow found your way into this chiropractic world. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so I was not from a chiropractic family. You know, I didn't, not even a holistic family. And um, I was in, you know, long story short, it, if you've heard me teach, you may have heard this story. I was in a neurooptometric family. So very science, very analytical, um, neurooptometry is all about the eye movements and altered eye movements and how they tell us things about the brain and how you can use, um, eye movement retraining and things like that, vision therapy and visual cognitive training to, to impact the brain. We see it a lot in both pediatrics, the behavior learning, socialization challenges, and also in like TBIs and um, post-concussion and that kind of stuff. So I grew up in that world, you know, I just like maybe some of you grew up in the chiropractic world, like at conferences and at the back of the thing, I was that in the neurooptometry world and I wanted nothing to do with it. Nothing. I did not want to do anything with that. And I, so then I learned about chiropractic. I actually learned about chiropractic through um, a friend of mine that I went to college with and um, her dad actually worked the audio visual at chiropractic conferences. Oh, wow. Um, That's interesting. He, yeah. He was the AV guy, like back in the day, Danny, like the conferences that we used to go to and where we first met uh -huh. where, you know, like kind of like mile high, but they were like on the, like every other month right. we'd go to him right. and he was the AV guy and he learned about chiropractic and like real chiropractic. He wow. I didn't about, realize that. Yeah. Like innate intelligence. And he learned about, he learned about it. And so he, I was visiting them one time on a college break and he was like, if I could do anything, I would be a chiropractor. And I was like a chiropractor, like to help people with back pain. And he was like, no. And he started telling me about real chiropractic and about the principles and all this, everything he learned from sitting in the back of these rooms. Wow. And I was like that, it gives me a chills, even just telling the story. That's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> so then I went and I found, you know, I got a, I'd never seen a chiropractor. I started learning about chiropractic. I got a job at a chiropractor's office. I had an amazing mentor who hired me, Dr. Linda Russell in Michigan. She made me a CA and then I was, I was like off to the races. So I became, you know, went to Sherman and I, uh, in my first like quarter of Sherman, I started realizing, learning about more of the philosophy and the science and the neurology. And I started realizing, wow, these two worlds that I'm in the chiropractic world and this neurooptometry and neuroeducation world, like they really need to be working together mm -hmm. for the betterment of mankind <laughs> and for kids. And so I, that was like the second light bulb for me where I went, I guess I'm supposed to do this. This is what I'm supposed to do. And so that's been the foundation for my entire chiropractic journey and professional journey and developing all this stuff and everything I teach and do. It's all about this chiropractic principle 
being the foundation of everything I do, but leading with the brain and bringing in kind of some of these functional neurological approaches and understanding in a collaborative way, but the foundation being chiropractic. And because that's what the science, that's the science makes sense to do it that way. And so I teach doctors, you know, I'm very passionate in the folks Academy and with our brain blossom programs to teach chiropractors how to actually do that. You know, it's so common that like when we start working in pediatrics and specifically with neurodeflective disorders and behavioral learning, socialization challenges and things of the brain that we shift into this, like this or that mode, or this, what I call deficit mode in chiropractic, where we're like, well, correcting subluxation is great, but then when it comes to ADHD or learning challenges or whatever, it's really, we have to treat the symptom with these, you know, exercises or eye movements or, you know, uh, nutrition or whatever, and not really knowing how to put those together. And so my whole thing, because of my background is empowering doctors to know how to put them together, but stay with the foundation of correcting subluxation, which is important. Excellent. Excellent. Now I, I have to ask you this, how thrilling is it when you find something for work, for a profession that lines up with your purpose? I don't know how I would do life without that. Um, I cannot understand going through life without one seeking the purpose. And I also feel like I was gifted at such a young age Um, I recognize now I was just like, had this gift, like literally I look at it as a gift that I was given this, um, that, that aligned for me so young. Mm -hmm. And so that I could live this life of purpose. And, um, I do think I would have, I would have sought that out because, uh, no matter what, because I it's, it is thrilling, like you said, and it is calming at the same time, because you know, you're doing what you were supposed to do. And so Mm -hmm it's a beautiful thing and a really a big honor to be. Yeah. I mean, I I think about that so often when I see people in other things and you can tell whatever it is that they're doing they're they're It's not necessarily their why or fulfilling. And I'm like, wow, it's such a gift to do something that fulfills a purpose for you um, versus not. Now you hone that in to more than like, people like, you know, chiropractic is a purpose in and of itself, but then, you know, this particular area is even more refined or pinpointed focus, um, Mm -hmm. or, you know, fulfills purpose more. So how did this particular area become something that's, uh, so fulfilling for you that you want to, you know, hone in on that? Well, I think it has like, there's multiple chapters to that for me, I think. Um, And I think people can relate to this in their own lives. Um, One is, you know, I grew up with a brother who had challenges and in this realm and he's great. He's amazing. He's got a full life now, but he had challenges with behavior and learning. And that's what kind of led my father down that path of pursuing the neuro optometry, as opposed to just typical optometry to figure out, to find his purpose and really figure out like what's going on with my son and how can I help my son? Mm-hmm. And, and that, um, really kind of lit a fire in me once I saw kind of my worlds colliding with chiropractic and with this base, this worldview or the space of knowledge that I had from growing up and seeing like also just having lived in a family with one of these kids who the whole family is impacted. I'm going to talk about that a little bit at mile high is like looking at the whole family unit and how, you know, it's not just about the one person who may be symptomatic. It's about this whole expression of life of the family and what's happening there. Mm. And how important it is that we recognize that and can create a safe place for these families in our practices and get great clinical results, all of that. But so that was kind of like phase one or chapter one for me. And then I would say, you know, getting into the work and then working with so many families and learning really as I was developing this work, really learning from those families and from those kids. And, you know, then I I just became so passionate uh, again in a different way at a deeper level about working with these kids because I was seeing, you know, all these different manifestations of these families being lives and expressions of life being altered. And so that became something. And then I became a mother, you know, and then that Mm. was like a whole nother chapter for me of going, 
wow, I'm so thankful that I have this lens of development and altered function and efficiency of development and all of this being a mother and a parent, because this allows me to be a better parent. And I can't imagine parenting without that knowledge. And so it's like, I'm so passionate about that. And so there's all these different chapters. And I think each one kind of like peels back and makes me realize just how important this work is and how necessary this work is for communities, you know, for us to be able to communicate well what it is that we can do to solve some of the biggest challenges that are existing in our communities, which is challenges of the brain in the pediatric population. You know, I, I want to ask you more about focus and what it is. Before I do that, um, as you're speaking at Mile High, A, um, what are you going to be sharing at Mile High? What areas focus on and why do you love being at Mile High? Well, what I'm going to be sharing is just about kind of what I was talking about there, more on how to lead with the brain to make the case for connecting kind of the science, the philosophy and the art of, you know, people often think like the, the science, especially like all this amazing neuroscience that we have emerging about the brain and the developing brain and things that impact the brain and all that stuff. So often people think it's like one or the other. It's like, you can have the science or you can have the philosophy, but I'm really going to be sharing like, okay, let's look at our communities. Let's look at the statistics. Let's look at what's happening in these families and in these kids. What does that actually look like? And then how do we take the science and then not neglect the philosophy or the art? How do these things fit all together into our practices so that we can lead with the brain, right? Lead with this amazing science, no more, but then make the case for our philosophy with that science. And you really can, it, it's not this, it's not one or the other, it's all of them. So I'm going to be talking about that and kind of bringing that together a little bit more um, for people to see like how you can start developing that, what I call brain-based lens for yourself as a provider and as a parent and all of that stuff. So I'm going to be talking about that at my eye. Wow. Now, listen, I'm, I'm super excited about that. Oh, good. Oh, good. Me too. <laughs> um, so the other thing that you asked was why am I, why do I like to come to mile high? Why am I excited? And, um, you know, the biggest thing, I love the content. You've got some really great speakers. Like I am like really excited for a lot of these speakers and have heard really great speakers before when I've been to mile high and that's amazing. But one of the main reasons I think it's so important and I love to come to mile high is the connection. And I've found that that is a really big and important piece of the puzzle when you're in practice is that you have something in your annual rhythm, a conference like this, where you can go and get connected with your purpose again. You can get connected with your people again. You can meet new people that maybe you didn't have connection with, but you can kind of get back in that bubble. And it might sound a little woo woo and all that, which it's not because it's really about we are out there doing our daily grind, doing our life, you know, and having this, you know, passion and connection and purpose with ourselves and our practice, but it, we really do kind of get dulled through the year and it's important to kind of get back in that. And, you know, you may have heard people say in the past, like get dipped in that. And like, I really do believe that's been something that's been important for me. And I noticed even my husband, who's a non-chiropractor has said to me over the, I'm in my 17th year of practice. He'll, he's said to me many times in my career, uh, you know, I think it's time you need to go to like a seminar <laughs> and, and like one of, you know, a seminar. And what he means is I think you need to get kind of re-inspired and reconnected. And it's interesting because I won't even realize it. But it's funny because over the years that's happened many times. And then I'll be like, oh, you're right. And then I'll go do that. And then, and I have even in the past gone to like seminars, like Cal Jam in the past and things like that, where I didn't know one person going yeah. back then. And I just went anyways right. for this purpose. And then I met people. And so I encourage people to do that. And if you're like one of those people who's like, I don't know anybody, so I'm not going to go. You, you can know me. I'll be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I realized that personally, because I was always, I mean, I'm a content junkie. I love getting, taking lots of notes and I want to see the best people. And then um, when I, you know, I, I realized putting on mile high, I, that's was what I 
tried to envision in creating it, then I realized, oh, wait a second, the feedback I'm getting is not that. People are like, ah, the people. I get to see people that I haven't seen for a long time, the friends I make and the conversations. I was like, oh, you that's important. Like, I didn't realize it. And yeah. then I realized, wow, like we thrive in community as chiropractors. Yeah. Like we thrive being around other chiropractors. And we've got to get out of the four walls of our office, yeah. all right, and be around other people that are on the same purpose and mission as us because yeah. it, it fuels us and it lifts us up. And I know that just like you said, I've experienced that in my life, but I didn't realize. And somehow, whatever way we do this, it's that comes out. So I, I'm yeah. really glad you say that because that's the most frequent feedback I get. And I didn't know that would be the most frequent feedback I yeah. get. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's both, Danny. I think that's the thing is like you have such great speakers. And I mean, I'm like I said, you have. I'm so excited. Some of my mentors that have been my mentors for my whole career, Liz Anderson Peacock, come on, she's the best. Um, <laughs> the best. Um, you know, and, and they're speaking in every year you have these great, you know, Stephanie Libs. Oh, so great. And like, you know, you just have these great, you have great content, which then attracts more people. Ah, right. And got then it. we have these great connections with like these people that we want to be in the room with, and you right. do want to be in the room with. And so um, I just think it's that it's both, right? But it's that's kind of one of the biggest benefits. I think that really, when you look at like ROI, if you're going to look at your ROI, um, mm -hmm. your energetic change, your change, and you getting that connection, and what that actually looks like when you bring that back to your practice, honestly, is probably even more than the content you're learning. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so speaking now, shifting focus, help people understand what focus is. Mm -hmm. Well, the focus Academy is our basically group. We run seminars, certifications. I have like lots of, you know, online seminars that people can take on demand. I have different workshops and things like that. And then the kind of entry level into doing the work more and having some of the systems and the exams and simply integrating this into your practice is uh, what we call our certification series. And we have one of those, that's it in 2025. It's going to be the beginning of 2025. Um, we limit it. People get on that because it's the only one for 2025. That's it. Yep. Okay. And um, we limit it to this year uh, under 50 people. Okay. Last year we had over a hundred and I was like, this is too big for this room. So we, I've limited it again. We've sold out the last four years, I think. Um but, but here's what it is, is we're teaching chiropractors. So chiropractors that are in family practice, chiropractors that see peds who um, are like, this is great. I understand subluxation impacts the developing child. It's important to correct subluxation. Most of the time they're interested in things like maybe using thermography or insight scans, um, that kind of stuff. And what we do is we say, let us take you a few steps deeper in your understanding about what does altered neurological function do and, and communication challenges within the nervous system. One, how do we measure that? Two, um, what does that mean? So that's the subluxation. We call that our first clinical question. And then the second clinical question is, and how does that alter the developmental trajectory? What does that actually look like wow. uh, in the developing brain? How do you integrate things and understand things like primitive reflexes and auditory verbal processing and eye movement challenges. How do you, we help chiropractors simply integrate that functional brain based lens into their subluxation based practice. And so basically effectively learning to lead with the brain to understand more about these behaviors um, and about these challenges and how we impact them and then how to, you know, couple this stuff together so that we're doing these things with this functional brain-based approach, but it's not taking us away from chiropractic. So we have this very systematic approach to teaching this work and integrating it in, into practices so that doctors, it's not, again, it's not this or that. It's not like you have to like abandon ship on chiropractic and like go do this whole neurosensory stuff or, you know, don't do any of this neurosensory stuff and only chiropractic. It's like, and put your head in the sand over here. It's like, you can marry these two and you should, when we're working with pediatrics, particularly five school-aged children, it's really important. 
Wow. Now, now, now talk about content. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's super exciting. Wow. This is like in-depth stuff for people to, to, to gain. So yeah. now there's, you're going to have to correct me, but there's focus educational services. Um, and then there is also, you know, neurodeflective retraining method, then navigating your heel, like break that yeah. down for people. Okay. So the focus Academy is one of the subsets of focus educational services. Got so, it. um, the focus Academy is where we teach chiropractors. Now we teach some OTs and, and sometimes, um, educators and things like that, but it's designed for chiropractors. And when we have OTs and, um, educators, we've had some primary care docs when they come, it's great because we're teaching them why chiropractic, <laughs> which is awesome. Got it. Um, but it's designed for the chiropractor to do the certification, to have more like, okay, I can lead with the brain in my practice. I can feel confident. I have the, I know these procedures and this exams I have, you know, I get it. So they're staying congruent with chiropractic that then we have the, um, brain blossom program in addition to that, which is where we integrate in, which after you take the certification, then you're, um, you're eligible to become a brain blossom provider, which is basically the brain blossom program is a brain and body exercise programming that integrates what we call the eight hierarchies of development, which you learn about in, sure. in the focus Academy, um, certification series. And, um, that's where it's like, okay, so a lot of times we do need to do the neural rehab piece, the body movements, the eye movements, the cognitive games, but there's a really specific way to do them. It's really important not to just go, oh, there's a primitive reflex that's unintegrated. Let's give this person a, a exercise to do at home. That actually can be not very effective and sometimes detrimental. So there's a way we want to do that. But here's the challenge, Danny, is that I didn't want to teach chiropractors to do all that neurosensory, the hierarchies of development, all of that in their practice, I want them to be really good chiropractors and correct subluxation. Mm -hmm. So we created the brain blossom programs so that that can be something they can offer in their practices uh -huh. and know how to offer it while staying principled in their chiropractic, but it's facilitated through an app that we created with these tracks that parents do it at home and through these stations they can have. Um, and so it's, 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 you know, allowing them to stay really good at what they do. And what we can only do as chiropractors, which Got is it. assessing practice subluxation. And so that's what that is. Um, navigate your handling is something that we, I created with a partner years ago, that's direct to parents to help parents understand, um, you know, more about self-care in the nervous system and bringing them kind of into our bubble, but for chiropractors, it's the focus Academy and the brain blossom programs. And we have, I think over, well, over 200, around 250, certified chiropractors in the world, nine countries, 30 some states, and um, around 70 brain blossom uh, chiropractors. So wow. we're, we're cruising and we're seeing an impact in communities and it's really great. Wow. That's outstanding. So now where does someone start where there's this whole uh, ecosystem of all these op options and say, well, uh, I want to start down this path. Where would I start? The Focus Academy, so gofocusacademy.com. We also have a free Facebook group. That's a great, it's got, um, I think around 1500 chiropractors in it. And that's a great place to start and just sort of like getting free content and hearing Q and A's and that kind of stuff. Um, and it's just with the focus. If you're a chiropractor, the place to start is with the Focus Academy and taking some courses. And there's some online courses or jumping into the certification series and, and taking that. It's a you know, um, it's facilitated over uh, virtual um, classes and then an online or a, a live weekend. And so that's the place to start. That can be the stopping point because then you have this stuff to do in practice, or you can take it further and offer brain blossom. And some people wow. choose one, some people choose the other. Excellent. Now, now I got to ask this, what would you, where, who would you recommend this for? What kind um, of, would this, or, you know, who yeah. would people most enjoy this? It's the chiropractor who's like, I'm in family practice or pediatrics. They identify as like, I am a pediatric, you know, chiropractor. You hear lots of chiropractors like saying that, right. And going like, I'm mostly a pediatric. That's what I want to do. Those are the people I like working with. And this work is really for all ages, but I'm really passionate about the pediatric portion of it, because if we can alter trajectory of life early, that's a really important thing to do. And so you know, you're in family practice, 
your, um, like I said, you, you, you have this foundation of going like, yes, I correct subluxation. I understand that subluxation impacts the nervous system. There's a neurological component to subluxation, not just musculoskeletal and which subluxate. So you understand subluxation, um, or you accept that and you're saying, but I want more. I want but why is this kid that I've been working on, their scans are improving. They seem to be improving. Their hyperactivity has gotten better, but now they're having a reading challenges and I, I don't know what to say. Or now they're having massive anxiety when they weren't before. And why is that? Does that make sense? Or do I give primitive reflexes or don't I? Do I, I know there's other things, but I don't know how to include them in. These are the things that, that are ideal doctors in the focus Academy have experienced. They're like, I know I want to understand this more and I still want to correct subluxation, but I know there's a little bit more that I need to know to be able to explain to the parents why we're seeing what we're seeing. And also to yourself, does it make sense? And then how do I add some of these other things? And how do I know when it's important to do that? Wow. This is all super exciting. Thank Which you. is why you put a lot of energy into it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm passionate tell. about it. <laughs> yeah. and, and you can tell, and there, guess what? It fulfills purpose. Yes, big time. Wow, excellent. So is there any last thing that you would like to share with our audience? I guess I would like to share. Um, I hope to see you all. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten your ticket yet for, um, it's next, I don't know when this is airing, but next weekend, you know, um, Four or five, two weekends, <laughs> yeah. Um, then get your ticket, come there. And I I myself am not an extrovert. Um, so I have been to many seminars, like I said, by myself, where I maybe um didn't know a lot of people and that kind of nervousness. So I'm gonna ask you, come up and introduce yourself to me. Um, and if you're especially if you're like not knowing who to talk to, come talk to me and introduce yourself. I would love to meet you. I want to definitely see you there. If that's kind of a hurdle for you getting to the seminar now, just remember what I just said there. So get a ticket and come be my friend. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you. I, I gotta tell you, um, Amy just gave you some wise advice because any time spent talking to Amy Spolstra is time well spent. So I would highly recommend um, to go say hi. And, uh, you know, she she's also very huggable. She'll give her a hug and say hi. And I learned so much from you and want to learn more. So. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Always okay. good to see you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for all you do for chiropractic, truly. Um, and I said there'll be links and notes in the, you know, in this, in the comments here. Um, so in the uh, notes along with the, blog that goes with this podcast you'll be able to get all that and um thank you so much everyone for listening thank you dr amy for being here and thank you for joining us at mile high and uh you know putting so much help to you know kids families and the profession and everyone who's watching make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss any mile high tick